We're on our way to Kailicha this morning, where we're going to meet a group of reclaimers. They collect recyclable materials and then sell them back in order to earn a livelihood. These are one of the more common types of informal workers in, in cities around the world. We hope to understand how they've actually coped with the pandemic and what sort of supports they need. How many reclaimers work in Kailicha? I think thousands. The most people who minimize their waste in our community, it's our reclaimers. What does a typical day look like? We wake up every day in the morning, we collect and go and store. Some other reclaimers use the open space, some they use in their small yards. So this is the household waste from informal housing, where they have to take it here. Before the pickup truck comes, we have to make sure we wake up early. So you want to sort out the recyclables before yeah. the municipal truck comes yeah. and takes it all away? Yeah, we take everything that we need. So this is the first stage of the process. This is raw household waste. They're looking for things like plastics, cardboard, tins, glass, any other type of recyclables that they can put together in bags to take to the buyback center. This is a container that informal settlements should uh, like they drop here, they are trash in there, but sometimes they close it. So people are just dumping informally and yes. the reclaimers are coming to find whatever they can. What is the thing that government could do to make the work easier for reclaimers? Even government can help us about separating their, their recyclable stuff. So really just some basic infrastructure, if it was laid out more efficiently in a more organized way they could actually collect quite a bit more materials. Yeah, and it would save their time. And time is money. <laughs> My name is Petros. This has come from the house. Check the plastic, but we don't take the dirty things. We work very hard for those people who've got transport. Yeah. Last time I get 400 rand. That 400 rand, I'm supposed to give that person 250. Yeah. But it's me who are waking up early in the morning. Mm. So this is a receipt from the buyback center. 40 kilograms of recyclable material, plastics here, and they got 120 rand. And that doesn't include the transportation costs that they had to pay just to get it to the center. The most important way to help you would be to organize transport, is that right? If you help us with the transport and we take that stuff in with, the, with our own transport, it's better because they abuse us about the money. This is a public space where we're standing yeah, it's now? it's just a public space. Yeah. Okay. So this is a PET. Since I mix them, this is HD. But they have to be separated, yeah, uh, to separate for the buyback yeah. center. Yeah. Okay. And so, can you do the sorting here, or do you need to take it somewhere else? No, to sort? I do the sorting. Okay. Yet. How much could you get for this at the buyback center? Maybe I can just get two hundred here. How long would it take you to fill up this bag? Two to three days. So every two weeks, then you would organize for transport to come and, and take to the buyback center. Yes. Yeah. And how much do you each pay for transport? If we were six, maybe we three. We pay fifty rand each. So twenty-five percent of just this bag here goes to transport. Yeah. yeah. I have to just collect and, and estimate. Last time I have to, I make this when I go to the buyback center. No, the prices are down. So just like that. So you might arrive expecting to take home 2,000 rand and you find out only when you get there that it's yeah. 1,000 rand in, instead. During COVID, did you get any support from government? Nothing. During COVID, we had nothing from us because it's just collecting and stored, no selling. Not so long ago, uh, I lose a bag because the people are stealing, stealing oh, the okay. stuff, yeah. We just met Arul last year, so that's when we start to be recognized as workers. So the card then that you get from registration will help identify you as a reclaimer that's working? Yes, they say it's going to give us access into the private sectors to get the material. I have this, I'm not... I'm not the kind of person who's going to steal something. I just, I'm working this, I'm doing this as a living. And is that the government that's involved with the registration or is that... No, we're moving forward, but with their support, maybe we're moving far. This work at the best of times is really tough. They were working during COVID. They were collecting all these recyclables, but they had nowhere to sell them and therefore no income 
for their homes, for their families. But Sia is telling me there is a glimmer of hope. These reclaimers working in this area are part of a registration drive, which will connect them to an extended producer responsibility scheme, which will top up their income. The big companies that make the recyclable materials put their money in a pot, and that money goes to support the reclaimers that end up recycling the materials. What I'm taking from my time with Sia is how little support these workers have as they provide what is an essential service to the community and the city. The key takeaway for me is that there are some easy policy wins here in South Africa that other countries could consider.